Hello everyone. Welcome to the first lecture of SYBSC Physics Paper 1, Mathematical Methods in Physics. I am your instructor. And as you can see, the title of the paper is Mathematical Methods in Physics 1. The index 1 here suggests that those who choose physics in their third year have another uh, MMP or Mathematical Methods in Physics paper, which is indexed as 2. Uh, code of this paper is 19 SC PHY U301. Here, henceforward, we will refer to this paper as the, by its code or by the abbreviative MMP. Now you recognize me. I'll switch off my webcam and we'll start with the presentation only. I'm referring to this lecture as lecture 0 because we will not go into details of any of the topics but what we will do is we will have uh, overview of the whole syllabus you can see the four chapters that we have in this paper chapter 1 is based on complex number chapter 2 is differential equations chapter 3 is vector analysis and chapter 4 is Fourier series so now what we'll do is we'll go quickly through chapter uh, chapter 1 by 1 and see the syllabus of each of the chapters so first chapter as i said is complex number in the the first topic in this chapter is the introduction of complex number uh, many of you perhaps are already aware of what complex number are but i'll just go quickly through what they are so let's consider one equation let's say we have an equation x square plus 1 is equal to 0. Now what, what we want to do is we want to find out value of x for which this equation is satisfied. So to find out the value of the equation what I do is I take this 1 on the right hand side of the equation and then I have this equation x square is equal to minus 1. Now mathematicians historically got into trouble when they came across this kind of equation. The reason is when we consider any real number, square of any real number, positive or negative is always a positive number. But in this case what we see here is square of x is giving us minus 1. And for that reason what mathematicians did, they defined an imaginary number i which is equal to square root of minus 1. This is called as imaginary for obvious reasons as I said. No real number when squared can give us negative number. And therefore, th once this i is defined, then now you can solve this equation. x square now becomes plus or minus i. Similarly, suppose now we have another equation. x square plus 4 is equal to 0. And we want to find out root of this equation. Again, when I change this 4, and take it to the right hand side of the equation what I get is I get into trouble because of this minus sign that 4 has and now the solution is already with us x square I can write it as minus 1 into 4 now I'll take square root of that so what I get is plus or minus i into 2 or this is generally written as plus or minus 2i so this is how the complex number came into the picture. In this chapter, the first thing that we'll discuss is these historical perspectives that we have for the complex numbers, how they came into the picture. Later, the next topic is real and imaginary part of complex number. Now, as we already have defined i, which is imaginary number as square root of minus 1. A complex number now is formed by two parts, x plus i into y where x is a real number and y also is a real number because of this i the number z becomes complex because it has two parts one part which is real part because it has only real number and the second part is this complex num complex part or imaginary part which is imaginary be because of the multiplication due to i so any complex number now is made up of real and imaginary part so that is, that is going to be the next topic that we want to discuss in this paper. The third topic is now complex plane. Can you tell me how we 
geometrically represent a real number? That's right. What we do is we draw a number line. Then we define 0 to be origin of this line. Then all the numbers which are on the right hand side of this 0 are positive and all the numbers which are on the left hand side of these this 0 are negative. So this is how, how we can represent real numbers using geometrical figure that is a straight line but now when it comes to complex number we get into a little bit of limitations of the space. The reason is complex number is made up of two part x plus i y. There is this real part and there is this imaginary part. So and x and y are independent of each other. So naturally what we will need to represent complex number is a two dimensional figure or a plane where we can represent x on x axis and we can represent y on y axis. This is called as real part of the complex number or real axis and this is this gives us the imaginary part of complex number or the imaginary axis. So that is the next topic that we want to discuss. Then we will dis we will study various representations of complex number. Any single complex number can be written as z is equal to x plus i y as we said earlier. But this is just one representation of complex number. There are two more representations namely uh, polar representations of complex number and exponential representations of complex number. Then in this chapter, next topic is basic algebraic operations of complex number like addition, multiplication, division and subtraction of complex number. Next topic is Euler's formula. This is a very important formula which helps us not only in writing complex, uh, performing various operations of complex number and writing complex number from one representation to another representation, but it, it is also important in many derivations that we come across in uh, physics in particular and science in general. Then we will see a few different functions of complex number. These functions will be powers and roots of complex number. Z if is complex number then what is Z square or what is Z cube or for that matter we can find out square root or Z raised to 1 by 2 or Z raised to 1 by 4 which is the fourth root of complex number. So we will also discuss uh, functions like this. Then we have in this chapter exponential functions of complex number. For example, e raised to z, suppose we want to find out, or we want to find out z raised to z2 or z1 raised to z2. So, all this we will discuss in this type of functions, which are the exponential functions of complex number. Then we will discuss trigonometric and hyperbolic functions of complex number, sin z or hyperbolic sign of z. Next topic is log of complex number and that is the syllabus for chapter 1. Oh, there is one more topic left which is inverse of trigonometric and inverse of hyperbolic functions. So that is the end of that is the uh, top uh, syllabus for chapter 1. Now next chapter, second chapter is differential equations. I am sure all of you are aware of differentiation. Suppose I have a function f which is function of x. Then you can always differentiate this function with respect to x by using the first principle as limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. So this is how you differentiate a function which is function of a single variable. And whenever we have an equation which, in, which has this term of differentiation in it, then we call it as the differential equation. So that is the, that is the topic of this next chapter. In this what we will do is more, we will not just consider functions which are functions of one variable, but we may have a function which is function of two variables or we may have function which is function of say three variables. In general, we can have a function which is function of n variable and in that case when you differentiate the function, you can differentiate it partially with respect to one of the variables. For example, here I am differentiating this f which is function of x and y with respect to x. So what I do when I differentiate partially, 
is I treat y as constant and will differentiate and differentiate only with respect to x. So these are called as partial differential equations. Similarly, this function f can also be differentiated with respect to y. So this is then called as the differentiation of function f with respect to y. So these these kind of partial differentiations also we will discuss in this chapter. Then total difference suppose as I said we have two we have a function which is function of two variable now what we do is we change value of x by small amount say x plus delta x from x we change it to x plus delta x we change value of y by delta y so value of y then becomes y plus delta y naturally since we are now we are changing values of both the variables we expect that the function will also change value of the function will also change at these two new coordinates and total difference now is nothing but how to find difference for a function with multivariable function by using partial differentiation then approximations using the differentials or rather approximations using the partial differentials this is a practical example where we will use partial differentiations to find out or to make error analysis in different physical uh, different experiments next topic is chain rule so we what we have discussed is we have a function with respect to uh, which is differentiated with respect to x now I, I may want to differentiate this function again with respect to x or I can differentiate this function or differentiation of function with respect to y so here when we want to differentiate it like this we can use the concept of chain rule next is implicit function this implicit function is a topic uh, which is also again uh, of practical importance suppose you have a complex function of or a complex function something like x square plus sine y into x cube is equal to zero so here again there are two variables x and y and now I can I should be able to write y as a function of x so, so given this equation I can also always write this equation in this form and now suppose I want to find out differentiation of y with respect to x now given the functional form this function differentiating y with respect to x is going to be a difficult uh, job but by using partial differentiation such different this equa this differentiation can be easily found which we will consider in implicit functions next next topic is change of variables many times in physics you want to change coordinate system you may have a rectangular coordinate system which you want to ch change to spherical polar coordinate system or cylindrical polar coordinate system depending on your system in that case this change of variable topic is going to help you whenever these kind of situations arise now the third chapter is vector analysis I think all of you are already familiar with scalar and vector product of two vectors suppose we are given two vectors a and vector b then scalar product is nothing but a dot b and vector product is a cross b now in this case in case of dot product a dot b gives us a scalar the output of this operation is a number without any direction so it's a scalar quantity and therefore it is called as scalar product of two vectors whereas this operation gives us a vector with which has magnitude and which has direction also that's why it is called as vector product uh, of two vectors so that is the review that we will uh, go through while discussing this chapter next topic is triple product now what we can do is you can you can have three vectors vector a b and c and you can perform an operation like a dot b cross c so in this case b cross c is some another vector let me call that vector as d and what you are doing then is you are taking dot product of this vector with this d and naturally this operation will give you again a scalar quantity so there is there are three vectors three therefore triple product of vector but this gives us a scalar so it is called as scalar triple product or you can have something like this a cross b cross c now operation b cross c is a vector and a cross d is again going to be a vector quantity 
so that's why it is called as vector triple product so we will consider this in triple products then next topic in this chapter is differentiations differentiation of a vector with respect to scalar you may have a particle which is moving in three dimensions so it has x component y component and z component and now you want to find out the acceleration so what you do is you differentiate this vector with respect to time or you differentiate the vector with respect to scalar and therefore it is called as differentiation of vector so we'll consider such differentiation we'll formally define what it means to differentiate a vector with respect to a scalar then we have gradient of a scalar field a scalar field is nothing but a field which is defined for space so what is value for a particular of a of any scalar at different points in space phi of x y z now what you can do is you can differentiate this with respect to x partially you can differentiate this with, with respect to y partially or you can differentiate this with respect to z, z partially multiply this first term by i which is unit vector along x axis this is multiply the second term by j and multiply the third term by sorry multiply the third term by k and this is called as the gradient of the scalar field don't worry if you don't get it right now we'll discuss it in detail when we discuss this chapter this particular chapter next topic is line integration and conservative field it is very much uh, related with what you have studied in classical mechanics conservative force fields gravitation uh, hooke's law all these are forces vector fields which are conservative force fields so that we will again revise and we'll see a mathmat see that particular topic from mathematics point of view next topic is divergence and divergence theorem in this case uh, what we do is we try to find out this term del dot v which is nothing but do v x by do y plus do v y by do I'm sorry, the first term is dou v x by dou x, dou v z by dou z. So, partial differentiation of x component with respect to x, partial differentiation of y component of vector with respect to y, and partial differentiation of z component of the vector with respect to z. This is called as divergence of the theorem. You can see here that v x, x, v y, y, and v z, z are scalar fields and therefore divergence of any vector is a scalar so we will discuss this in detail don't worry again if you don't get it we will thoroughly discuss it while discussing this chapter next topic is curl and stokes theorem this is another operation that you perform another kind of differentiation that you can perform with vectors and finally in this chapter what we will discuss is Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics this topic itself is a it's a, in itself is a big topic we, we are not going to discuss it very thoroughly what we will do is will all these topics or rather these three gradient divergence and curl of vector field that we have studied we will apply these three concepts to um, equations of electrostatic that you already have seen last year last and fourth chapter is fourier series uh, in this we will discuss how we can expand any function f which is function of x in terms of sine and cosine so this is the last chapter it is widely used in almost every branch of science and engineering in this we will see how to find out average value of a function by using integration fourier series as I said, we can expand any function in terms of sine and cosine and that series is called as Fourier series. We will first discuss it for periodic functions, then Fourier coefficients which are part of the Fourier series that we will see. Then we have Dirichlet conditions. Any function should satisfy certain conditions called as the Dirichlet conditions to, uh, to be expanded in terms of sine and cosine. These conditions we will go through then complex form of Fourier series when you we will again here use the Euler's formula I mentioned in first chapter then 
next topic is even and odd functions if when you have function which is symmetric or anti-symmetric anti about y-axis then you don't have to worry too much about the Fourier coefficients half of the Fourier coefficients vanish in that case and we will discuss that particular here that particular thing here Parseval's theorem is uh, a theorem in Fourier series which is uh, which has very wide application in physics also and finally we will introduce Fourier transform we won't go through Fourier transform here in detail we will just briefly see this particular uh, topic and that is the syllabus for SYBSC which we will refer to as 19SCPHYU301 thank you